Hello, I'm Sammy P. Welcome to welcome to episode 22 of my Let's Voice series. It's a series where I use the excuse of practicing my voice acting to justify playing video games. And if you're watching the video and you're enjoying yourself, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. It's all great ways to help the channel grow. And if you're not enjoying yourself, the dislike button's there. Destructive feedback is always fantastic. But let's jump into it. Ah, my nose is itchy. All right. So we, uh, we just spoke with the Queen. Um, I feel like he, uh, at the end of the episode, he actually, I missed it. And this is one of the problems of not having voices on. I missed him, but it came up down here. But I missed the Prince? Prince Aruhi? Aruhi. I missed the Prince uh, saying that he wanted to uh, talk to me. I think I wrote it down. Did I write down how to pronounce it? I did not. I went to check a bunch of the pronunciations that I will probably invariably forget. And I completely forgot to check this guy. Uh, but first, we have Maya, our new ranger friend. And her, her bird, Ishiza. And I have definitely not turned sound voices off so we're gonna quickly do that um okay we have that we she wants to talk with us but we're quickly gonna check oh that's a quite a lean you've got going on there sword sharpshooter what are you what are you actually Gunhawk. Gunhawks are a type of ranger unique to uh, uh, Rawatai who use hawk companions to complement their sharpshooting skills. Well, hi. And you're a marksman. Stealth and explosives. Your stealth is quite good. Okay. That's not bad. High deck. Uh, yep. Okay. Gunhawk. Plus 20% range with all of those things. Seems to tend to interrupt with... Uh, Aquabus. Ah, interesting. So you like black powder weapons, basically, is what we're saying. Immune to slog zones. Neat. Gunhawk. All firearms. Uh, Aqua's pistol and blunderbuss have increased range, all firearms intercept, and there's no penalties. No penalties. Sure, why not? And you've got uh, Ishi, Ishiza, who is, is fine. He's a vicious takedown. Birds have a natural ability to avoid engagement entirely. So, yeah, the bird can just go wherever the bird needs to go. What do you like? Don't like animal cruelty? Wow, you're against pro Juana. That seems awkward. Lighthearted, provi provincial? Uh huh. Pro Rawatai, not surprising. Resourcefulness. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Reload time goes down. Armor goes, goes up. You can be enchanted to armor. Deflect. Increases with stealth skill. Wow. Okay. Convert hits to crits after being missed. Bonus. Alright. All good things. That's a... Uh, I have a better one, don't I? Yeah. Here you go. Have a... Have a nicer gun. Look at it. Look how shiny it is. Hmm. Shiny. And a sword, I see. You dual-wielding swords? You are dual-wielding swords. Do you have a pistol as well? No. Alright. Back to the gun. Uh, yeah, cool. Alright, and we, they want to, she wants to have a chat. 
I know exactly what you're thinking. Maya folds her arms and clicks her tongue against the roof of her mouth. Oh, what's that? You're asking yourself, how did I let the Royal Deadfire Company plant an informant in my crew? <laughs> she chuckles to herself. There's a note of resignation to it. Seraphin grins. Everyone likes her worldliness. All right. My superiors might expect me to report in from time to time, but don't read too much into it. You're not the only big thing happening around here. I'm in this for a lot of information, a little diplomacy, and plenty of target practice. She opens her palms and shrugs. Well, I mean, at least you're up front about spying on me. Better that you hear it from me than someone else, right? How is it Shodi's angry at the skullduggery, but, like, she's not doing skullduggery? She's on... She's admitting... Like, it's not skull, skullduggery if you admit to it. The company isn't in the business of, res, of reassigning officers outside of the mission. Unless they've got a damn good reason. I think she's... I'm doing a bit, bit too... Getting close to, sort of, Aeloth. I don't think... It's not really what I want to do. Meh, nah, meh, nah, meh. Nah. And you are a damn good reason. Mm, take the compliment. I don't know. And you are a damn good reason. Eh, take the compliment. So what if my actions damage the Royal Deadfire Company? This... Well, this whole campaign... Uh, no. Hmm... Turns out, as a guy, it's a little bit difficult to do female voices. I mean, I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Uh, I think this is Marisha Ray's character as well, so... This whole campaign is, is a risk-benefit analysis. The Navy knows you're a gamble, and they're factoring in all the potential losses. Maya wipes a line of black powder from her cheek. Rawatai is here to do some good work. Rawatai is here to do some, do some good work, since the Huana can't seem to do it themselves. Maybe just try to stay out of our way. Look, I'm I'm seeking Aethus. I don't I want no part in trading company drama. <laughs> well, and I look forward to seeing how long it takes you before you take. Mm. And I look forward to seeing how long it takes before you find yourself in someone's back pocket. Oh, guess you ought to meet the bird. Ishii is smarter than he looks, but don't expect him to do any tricks. She nods towards the colourful bird of prey hopping around your ankles. Ishii, come! Maya taps her arm with two fingers and clicks her tongue again. Oh, that's a good-looking bird. Adair raises one hand and waggles his index finger. Hey, birdie. Hey, birdie. Ishia shows no sign of recognition towards Maya or Adair. Ishia simply claws at the ground and investigates some bugs a few graceful hops away. Oh, insight. Click your tongue like Maya. Cocking his head... Ishiza turns to you with a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. Maya cocks her head and listens. Takes practice before he'll listen to you properly. But that's a good start. Adair nob nobs. Adair nods at Ishiza, who bobs his head in response. Adair nods twice, and the large bird replies with two head bobs. Adair begins <laughs> Damn, I forgot how much Adair loves animals. Adair begins tilting his head up and down. Ishiza follows it with vigorous, full head body bobs. Encouraged, Adair begins... 
encouraged, Adair starts bouncing his own body up and down. At which point, she... <laughs> At which point, Ashiza stops bouncing and watches Adair with cockeyed curiosity. God damn it, Adair. Bert, Bert, Bert. Did, um... Did your friend suffer a head wound? Maya frowns at Adair. <laughs> he got a really nasty bite in the last game. Look, before we get into deep waters, I've got a question. Maya clears her throat into her fist. <clears> throat> uh, you've got a ship and a title. Being captain means more than just wearing a big hat. Lots of tough calls to make. I'm sorry, uh, godlike? I can't wear a hat. What with these apparently tumor horns coming out of my head. So I will thank you for not bringing that up. It is a touch, touchy subject of late. I still get the big hat, right? Oh, I like that answer, but I can't wear hats. Why would I want a big hat? Look, I didn't exactly choose this life, but I'm trying to make the best of it. Life at sea, it does have a, a way of simplifying things down to the bare elements. Maya looks like she's ready to say more, but stops herself. A crew can be like family. They can also be like a nest of squalling infants. A nest of infants, all right. Let's say your galley cook was fixing to organize the rest of the crew into a mutiny. How would you handle it? Diplomatic? Is she a better grasp of morale? I would generally prefer to be benevolent, but that seems very benevolent. Let's go with di diplomatic. I guess I'd get ahead of the problem and compromise with the crew. Sorted out like as equals. Interesting. Of course, the only right answer is the one that works in a given time and place. I just wanted to hear yours. What's yours? Huh. Ask me again when I'm wearing the big hat. That'll be a different Maya. But enough out of me. Glad to be aboard, Captain. Uh, I had some question. Takes your hand and gives it a good pump. I've got some answers. You're one of Kana's siblings, aren't you? Is she? Blah? How did you... You're one of... Wow, really? Okay. Sure am. And I heard... That you two spent some time together. Funny how the gods toss things together. Kana came back from the de from the Deerwood with a head full of ideas about Rauatai's expansion. Getting out from under the academics suited him. I never knew he could be so political. More than his sister ever no more than his sister ever could be. You clearly had some sway on his opinions, more than I, more than I ever did. I wish you had told Kana to give up the poetry. He's got no ear for it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear he's making a difference. Take it easy on him. <laughs> no. As his sister, I'm supposed to catalogue his missteps. He's your brother? All right. I do with bullets what Kana did with words. Just in case you were wondering, the comparison ends there. Maya tips her head and studies you to make sure the point came across. Alright. Well, how did you and Ishiza first get acquainted? I won a shooting competition at the Ranganui's estate. Ranganui's estate. This was a few years before enlisting with the Navy. As a reward, 
He gave me the freedom of the Royal Airy and said I could take my pick of the warbirds. Maya kneels and strokes under Ishiza's beak. Stink Feathers here kicked a rather pretty hawk off my arm so he could have me all to himself. Been inseparable ever since. Well, hello, Ishiza. Who's a good bird? The bird cocks his head, his eyes reflecting a mixture of friendly recognition and murderous calculation. Uh oh, that's his I'm hungry and you're wasting my time face. Better step back, Captain. Well, tell me about your family. Well, my parents came from the dead fire. I'm getting a taste of my roots. <laughs> Meyer exhales and glances away. After they emigrated to the Ruatai, the Rawatai, their talents caught the Ranganui's eye. He saw them as this spectacle, this achievement of the old country, I guess. Say so they were honored guests. Not many Juana rose to distinction in Takawa. We were also curiosities. Even as we broke the same bread and tossed back the same wine, the Ranganui's friends always checked under the table to see if I had a tail. I kind of thought it was hilarious. Wait, Island Umara aren't that different from Coastal Umara. You're telling me. You're telling me. Growing up in the Ranganui's shadow wasn't all bad. We had tutors and advisors at our disposal. A lot of folks from stranger parts than these. I spent my days learning to shoot while my more academic siblings learnt to express themselves. I'll leave you to judge who spent their time better. Well, let's be off. Now, like I said, I'm pretty sure he wants to have a chat, so... Your coming is a favorable omen already. The prince nods and crosses his arms, a self-satisfied self smile on his lips. I what? Religion, mystic, or scholar? Honestly, I'm just happy to be alive. Such modesty, I say. You happen by at a time when our rivals bicker and tear at each other's throats. It doesn't does it does not take a priest to see how the gods send us an outsider to dig under the skin of our enemies. Rahuhi chuckles to himself and nods. Well, I'm honored to meet you. Save your manners for my sister. Kohopa fashioned me for the arena, not the court. Oh, goodness. Oh, many who are... Oh, Kohopa is the other eel. Where I am marked by Tangaloa, he is marked by Kohopa. Or at least he thinks so. I will not paddle around the island. My sister wants to know if you are as useful as you are disruptive. She trusts me to judge this. You did not come this far to serve the crown, I say. But sailing is an expensive hobby. Loyal service can keep your galley stocked. Ah, I always need more insight. What kind of loyal service did you have in mind? My sister keeps a tight grip on Nekataka, but the filth of it drips down her palm and into the gullet. All right. Now, unlike Benwith, he's actually referring to the um, district. He opens his hands for emphasis and wipes it across his shoulder. Under our noses, I say. They have this thing. I, I don't know what this, this thing or They keep saying, I say. It's like this emphasis that I'm, I'm guessing it's an Omara thing or... I don't know. Under our noses, I say. Do foreigners smuggle contraband and pay the Ruparo for their silence? Uh, or the lower class. Okay. 
take this if you need proof. He tosses you a silver medallion inscribed with Valian honorifics. Uh, the medallion once graced the neck of a Valian dignitary and was assumed lost after a terrible shipwreck. How it ended up in the back streets of Nekataka is a question that Prince Aruhi once answered. Okay. Uh, what? I mean, I just found out, but what is this? An envoy's ship sank a day's voyage out from Nekataka. He wore that on his breast. My guards recovered it in a raid of the gullet. This confirms my suspicion. Nekataka has a pirate problem. Pirates? Ugh, I wouldn't know anything about pirates! Smugglers and thieves cluster like rats in the Delver's Row. God, all these places. Beneath the gullet. Wow. Cool, alright. So it's where all the thieves gather. Ah, a growth in the bowels of our city. You don't like... Oh, God. I can't remember. Carton. Light feet. Heavy bullet. You think pirates raiding those Republic bastards be the source of your people's agony? Nope. So, uh... I need a better through li in line for Seraphon to get the voice. I need better in lines, like in lines, through lines. Uh, I use a lot of often when I'm, when I'm doing a voice, it's nice to have like a line that puts you into that space of the voice. And I just don't really have one for Seraphon or for a lot of these people. And so it's the more voices there are, it's harder to sort of bounce between them. But that's why we practice, I guess. Uh, all right, Captain. You think pirates raiding those Republic Republic's bastards be the source of your people's agony? Wonder what the gullet folk would be thinking of that. Surf. Anyone who preys on my people will know Onakaza's justice in time, I say. Uh, Aruhi nails his, uh, narrows his eyes at Seraphim. I want someone to peddle the medallion to the black market, earn the trust of these pirates, and learn how supplies come into my city. Why do you need a watcher for inspection duty? It must take keen senses to peer through the veil. Uhai thumbs his jaw and nods to himself. Others will miss the details that stand out to you, I am thinking. Alright, sounds profitable. Anything else I should know? Yours is not a face that others will recognize. Let no one learn that you work for the crown. When you travel down the mountain, seek uh, seek Takehu in Perakee's Overlook. He is a godlike, one who the people look to for hope. The prince thumbs his chin and smiles. Nagata is clo- uh, Nagati's. Oh, right. Nagati's chosen known... Ah. Nagati's chosen no... Oh, knows of our... Nagati's chosen knows of our troubles. He could also use a lesson, lesson in... He could also use a lesson in Roparu modesty. Uh, Nagati's chosen? Takehu was touched by the goddess Nagati at birth. He is as much a creature of the sea as he is Huana. We are left to interpret what the gods intend by sending him among us. Well, it never hurts to have a local guide. I'll go find Takehu. Ekera. If I know Takehu, he is stirring tempers in the Water Shapers Guild. I mean, I'm happy to have an excuse to go into that building, because that, that place looked cool. Be on your guard in the gullet. I fear the uh, caverns run deeper than even Nagati could guess. Prince dismisses you with a nod. Okay. Um, I kind of want to go get Pelagina first. And then we'll go back 
uh, I mean, it's technically going to be a bit of backtracking, but I think it should be fine. Also, can we just... Seriously. What? That's... I mean... Holy crap. I've talked about how, like, the, particularly the lighting in this game is just so great. It's just spectacular, but... Man, that's pretty. Water dances in graceful circles around this coral sculpture. Look at it. Oh, the fish are made of water. Oh. Definitely need to go check out the water shapers. But let's get our let's get our old companion back first. Then we'll deal with uh, what I'm assuming is a new companion. <laughs> Getting all the companions now. Uh, so we'll head down. Uh, and we'll have a look. They said they were in, she was down in Queen's Birth, which is where we, um, look at all the animals we've got. Adair must be beside himself. Okay, so last episode I was I was wondering if getting to the different places meant was done by was based on sorry, what exit you took. And that does seem to be the case, but now it seems because I've been there, I can skip Perikey's overlook, go straight to Queen's Birth. Um But I can also go to the Sacred Stair, because I've got access. So we're gonna go to Queen's Birth. We'll get we'll go back to, to talk to to Keu, um, because we are coming close to the end of the episode, but, uh, we'll see if I can quickly find, there she is, oop, I don't have a mouse, oh, there it is, but she's on the, yeah, Pelagina, who was in my, like, sort of core, oh, hello, oh, you're just, you're just walking by. I thought he was running up to us to be like, I have news! Watcher, please! Do, 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 do. Look at all these people. Wait. I thought that name looked familiar. Badato Estate. I'm guessing you have quests. Um, where do I think? Let's go there. That's where I'll start looking for Pelagina. But this person has an actual name, which means she has stuff to say. Madicio. Where is that spoiled brat? A woman in fine clothes clutches a ledger in both hands. He searches the faces of passers-by, settling on yours with an uncertain frown. Uh, are you alright? I'm trying to be the responsible one in the family. And it's a heavy burden. Laro is past due for a company meeting. Mother wants me to drag the elusive louse back by the ear. She tucks the book under her arm. Nope, nope, sorry. Thought there was a problem with the next split, but it's okay. Must be nice to be a layabout. Uncle Angbert would have tanned my hide. Ach, I am angry and jealous in equal measure. You'd think this district was amazed the way he manages to hide. She glances over your shoulder and sighs, then looks back at you with sudden recognition. Oh, hello. The spirit magnet. Uh, Sinteri, that I did not recognize you. If you desire to get in the graces of the Valian Trading Company, we can help each other. I actually do want to do that. That would be nice. 
Uh, what, wait, what sort of clout do you have with the trading company? Well, Mother's Bank commands the wealth of the Dead Fire campaign. Nera absently pats uh, the cover of her ledger. Could I persuade you to watch out for Lario? Laro? I'd pay generously for your trouble. Oh, study her hands? Nera has been digging her nails into her ledger, leaving crescent moon-shaped impressions in the binding. She notices your interest and holds the book protectively close. I am concerned because Laro tends to feud with Orso, one of the local Valera rats. What do you mean by Valera rat? The Valeras a brood of sea vermin playing at nobility. She hefts her ledger as if to bring it down on a pest. We squabble and compete, but Laro, the Postinago, takes it too far. Literally the Valian term for carrot, but conversationally meaning idiot. <laughs> the carrot takes it too far. I like it. I mean, you aren't exactly tearing the district apart looking for him. Excuse me. I only manage the family business. She takes up her ledger with both hands, holding it like a shield. Better to ask why Laro isn't spiriting back to look after his birthright. Look, if I happen to cross Laro, I'll let you know. Would you? I'll be waiting at the estate in, ca in case he happens to return. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern and the falls above the Adramil. Uh, uh. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern, the falls above the Adramil, and the southwestern bridge. If you see him, tell Laro to get his good for nothing ass back home. Well, we do have this thing about chasing a rogue guard to the ends of Aurora. But I guess if it's on the way. I feel like we just got a job palmed off on us. But at the same time... It's probably okay. That's the end of the episode. If you've enjoyed it, please feel free to like and share and subscribe. As I say, it's a great way to help grow the channel. If you haven't, dislike buttons there. Comments good or bad, a welcome. No spoilers, please. But otherwise, I'm always open for comments. I guess we've got more companions to find. I want to get um, uh, Pelagina first, because she's the original one, and and uh, they were talking about her in that meeting. I'm guessing because there's multiple ways that her story could end in the first game, and I think from memory, because I, I had her... Um, go against her orders. Um, and if you do that, she gets she lo she gets um, kicked out of her um, paladin order. But I think if you then choose to return all the souls to the deer ward and help like strengthen them, then she gets accepted back. But I did not do that. I think I returned them to the wheel. I think yeah, I think I get I think I, I sided with Berath in the first game. So she probably she's probably a different paladin order now. Or not a paladin? I'm not sure. I remember looking it up a little bit, but I didn't want to I didn't look too far in case of spoilers. Uh, then we'll go talk to Takehu, who is apparently a water shaper, which should be also fantastic. Uh, so that will be episode 23. Hope you join me. Until then, I've been Sammy P. I'll see you then.